as we welcome back in our good friend, Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, college football expert, national champion quarterback, all-around good man, Blaine. Welcome back. Gosh, it must be the season. I'm here. It's football season here. at Blainson Studio. Football on Saturday. Yeah. So you've seen the depth chart. Where are you most excited and concerned looking at that fall camp depth chart? You get excited about the talent that we know is there. So anytime I see Taysom Hill's name and he's healthy, that's exciting, right? I, I love the receiving core. But as, as a guy that has watched BYU football for a long time and, and, and someone that knows what allows an offense to be good, I'm most excited about the offensive line. Really? Interesting. Why? Okay. Because when, when BYU's really good, when they win 10, 11 games, they dominate the line of scrimmage offensively. I feel like this offensive line this year has enough experience coming back, but more importantly, they have that little bit of edginess to them that, that we've been talking about for the last couple of years has been missing – that, that allows them to be aggressive, knock people off the ball, allow them to run the football. And if they can run the football effectively, then that opens up the pass game. Um, and, and I think that that's where it all starts. For, B, for successful BYU teams, it always starts with a great offensive line. And this is as excited a, a, about an offensive line as I've probably been in four or five years. Interesting, because I think BYU needs this offensive line more this year than – the past few seasons, one, no Jamal Williams, so you need to block well. And then two, you're playing a higher level of opponent, which is great. Not to mention the Taysom Hill answer to us, Blaine, last week. What's, what's the on-the-field difference for you without Jamal Williams? And Taysom Hill said, pass the ball more. You've got, you've got to be able to protect him. You've got to keep your most important player healthy. So not only do you have to be able to run block and knock people off the ball, but you've got to be able to keep that guy on his feet. Let's, let's keep Taysom Hill's backside clean this season. and that Because if he's healthy, then this team's got great potential. If he's not, it's a little bit scary. And, and I love Tanner Mangum's skill set, but I never feel good about playing a freshman quarterback when he has to play. Let him acclimate. Yeah, and so if he has the time to acclimate, Taysom plays the whole season, that offensive line does their job, then the sky's the limit in far, as far as I'm concerned with this offense, even without Jamal Williams in there. Because I think there's enough weapons and there's enough change up in there with Algie and Adam. Um, and and then I think Nate Carter gives you a nice change up. There, there's enough there to have a, a consistent run game if the offensive line is dominating the way I think this one can. And there's there's multiple guys on that line now. I was just looking in the last couple of years for one guy to have a bit of an edge to him. Just you have to have one idiot on the offensive line. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to have one idiot. One guy Who is that, that, idiot? That, that in practice everybody goes that goes, man, that guy's an idiot, but I'm glad that idiot's on my team. Are you willing to call it who the idiot is? No, this, this year line? I think we have a couple of idiots, which is great. <laughs> That's what you what? want. You, you've got. I, Descri I just describe that more. A, like, an idiot it, is a guy that he's getting up off the pile and he steps on a guy's hand just because he can't contain himself <laughs> this, from doing is it. Is this Dustin Reichert? It's, there's. A, I'm not saying. I'm not naming names, you guys. <laughs> this would but be bad. Is it, in, in other words, a certain tenacity. A nastiness about the, him. The actual a nastiness. A defensive yeah. lineman's mentality and offensive lineman. So, idiot, so, idiot is at a certain kind of thing. It's just like <laughs> idiot is a good – in this case, idiot is a good thing. We were talking the other day about uh, Chris Komayatu from, from the University of Utah. Mm -hmm. Like – he just wanted to stomp on somebody's face for no reason. It just was in him. Like, and he's a good kid off the field, but he walked over that white line. It was like controlled rage out there. I, I've been saying for three years, can BYU just get one guy on that offensive line that will raise that nastiness level, just one idiot to raise the nastiest le nastiness level so that the whole offensive line plays with more aggression? I think they got a couple of them this year. Do you remember? Do you remember <laughs> the, the that. impact that Famika and I had yes! in the limited time he played? The greatest the single walk -off performance of the year against Hawaii in 2012. He brought nastiness to that line for one game. He carted off two dudes in one series. That's what I'm talking about. No one wants to I'm get not hurt, saying Famika's an idiot. But I'm not not saying it. <laughs> and so and he's, isn't he coaching on the team? Yes, he is. Right he can now? he can get some of that nastiness going. So I love a bunch of nice gentlemen playing for us. But when they cross over that white line and you're up front, if you don't want to physically beat the crap out of the guy across from you, then you don't belong out there. And I feel like 
Tuje's got a group of guys with some nastiness about them, enough of those guys that they'll raise everyone's level and they'll get after it. And I'm excited to see that. And you want to know what? We get to see it, if, the, if it's true or not, in game one. Because the strength of this Nebraska team is their defensive line. They may have the best defensive line in the Big, Big Ten West. And so we'll know if they're good or not Saturday. And if they can knock people off the ball and effectively run it and protect Taysom Hill – then I'm going to get really excited about this offensive line because the test comes right out of the shoot. Okay, I think two years ago the soundbite of the year was Trevor Maddox saying, don't sleep on Idaho State. I believe we have a front runner now in uh, – you need – We need an idiot. Uh, we need we an need idiot or a couple idiot. idiots on the I, offensive line. So, so I'll, be, I'll give you an example. <laughs> so back when Kellen, my oldest, was playing here, um, I said to him one day on the phone, I go, hey, how'd practice go today, Kel? Uh, it was good. Ray Fanga punched me in the face. Ray Fenga's in my uh, ward. I go, why, why, did, why did Ray Fenga punch you in the face? Because he's an idiot. That's just what he does. And I go, he's an idiot. He goes, and Kellen says, no, no, I, I mean that in a very affectionate way. I love Ray Fenga. Like, we got the field. We're going to bro hug each other. But he's just, he's just an idiot on the field. He's just nasty. He's just, yeah, on the verge okay. of punching somebody in the face at all times. I said, did you do something? He goes, no, he just punched me in the face. I go, did you have your helmet on? Yeah, I have my helmet on, so it's no big deal. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Ray was an enforcer out there on the field. He okay. was big, nasty. I'm going to bring that up with Ray tonight at church. Okay, ball. you ask him. Well, I'm sure Ray's much mellower now. <laughs> yeah, <but>. Yes, he is. <laughs> now, just, just to back you up, Brian Keel has talked about this person. He, he explained it as a guy that is like a half or a half chromosome away from being certifiably crazy. Yes. You want those guys. So maybe that's the idiot. Yeah. And, and you don't want five of them. You want one or two on the offensive. You like, can only tolerate okay. so many yeah. penalties. Because what, what God does to even out the world is he usually takes six, seven, 320-pound crazy big guys. He makes them really nice so that we can survive. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to survive. We'd have, you know, and then the smaller guys are usually the nasty guys. So when you can get that big, mild-mannered guy and put him beside a crazy man, then the mild-mannered guy gets a little bit of craziness in him, and now all of a sudden you're coming off the ball and you're dominating people and you're knocking people around, and now you've got yourself a good offensive line. And I, Like, I'm... I think there's a couple of guys on there that could play that big, nasty role uh, this year that have that mentality. And you know what? I'm not naming names, but lots of times the offensive line starts with the center. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> it, it, he needs he, – yeah, T. John needs to be uh, – It needs is to be good. needs to be uh, – have some nastiness. Let's talk about the secondary because that's kind of where the most question marks are going into uh, uh, game one right here. So we have Hanneman at field corner. Davis at boundary corner, Takanaka at cat, and Kainaku at free safety. Uh, we were talking about how it's, it's not hard to predict that maybe there's some consequences from the sucker punch in the Miami Beach brawl, Jordan Prater at free safety. Your thoughts on the secondary? Yeah, I, we've, we saw them cross-train Jordan Prater. We saw him in the last scrimmage playing free safety. He looked really good. I, like, I was impressed. He definitely has the feet for it. Um, what I'm looking for, I think they're athletic enough there. If you play Jordan at, at, at free Hanneman, to me, was the most impressive guy from just a pure physical standpoint in the, in the defensive backfield. We, we know that Michael Davis can run with the wind, and we know that Prater's got good feet and can run. When I watch Hanneman, I get really excited because his hips, the way he flows to the football, the angles that he takes on the field, things that through repetition you hope guys get, he just has naturally. So I think that he – before the season's over, we're going to go, wow, this kid could be one of the better DBs BYU's ever had there. He's going to be really, really good. That gives me some comfort, um, and he's smart. What I'm watching for in the first couple of games, we had athletic guys back there last year in the secondary, yet we were getting 10 and 11 games in, and we were talking about the same coverage errors. Can they play smarter this season? Can they be where they're supposed to be? They're physically gifted enough to be able to cover anybody that they need to cover. For BYU, this offense is going to be so good. If that defense can do what they're supposed to do, keep people in front of them, don't allow big plays, make teams drive 12 and 13 plays to get a score, and then when they throw it underneath, come up and smack them in the mouth. Now – you're playing the kind of defense BYU has to play. They don't have to be lights out on defense. They need to manage points and make teams drive the field. This offense is good enough to win every game that you're in if you can just do that. So I'm watching the secondary to see if they're smart. 
Will they stay on top of things? Will they be in the right coverage? Will they not give up big plays? If they'll do that, and they're certainly physically capable to do that, then this is going to be this will be a good season. Generally speaking, when the linebacking core is good, BYU has a pretty solid defense because the linebackers play such a huge, vital role in the 3-4. They're the majority in that front seven. So is when you look at the defense, with who is placed on the field right now in that depth chart, are the linebackers the best position group on the BYU defense right now? I, I think they are, they're very talented. I I, I would put them ahead. I think the D-line is really good. But we expect such a workmanlike effort out of the D-line. If I was going to say who am I most confident in going into the first game, I'm most confident that that D-line is going to eat up blocks up front and do their job. Okay. So I'm most confident in that group. I think the linebackers are their most talented group, which is what they need to be. But with the position changes and moving guys from inside to outside and, and, and Lange finally being a leader and being a full-time guy there, I, I still think they're a work in progress. I they're definitely the most talented. But will they be able to produce? Well, we don't know. I know that D-line will produce. Those guys have all played. When you look at uh, the backups, uh, there are nine freshmen uh, in the two deep. What do you think of that number with freshmen? I, I think that's high. You know, you guys were saying you'd have to look and see if other programs. I, I, I mean, I, I think that that's a high number. Um it's a testament to the kind of talent they're bringing in that these guys can make their way just in a few weeks of fall camp to where they're going to be relied on to play. Um, but I get a little bit nervous about that. I get, I get nervous about a freshman as your backup quarterback. Um, he's as talented a freshman quarterback as they've had here ever. I watch his skill set and I go, wow, he's really, really going to be good. But then, then you know, I, I think about trying to make reads and do all the things when the field's just running crazy. That makes that makes me nervous. A lot of line, you know, a lot of linebackers and secondary players that are young. I mean, it's just you, experience is important in this game. And there's a big jump from high school to college, and then there's an even bigger jump when your first game's in front of ninety thousand people at Nebraska against a team that's pretty talented. So let's hope we're just like we said with Tanner Mangum that we can get these guys seasoned over time, that they can play in spots and that we can take the really great physical talent they have and combine that with experience. So by second half of the season, we're feeling really good about the depth. Okay, Blaine, looking at Nebraska and BYU, the dynamic of that Nebraska offense, which has big time question marks against the BYU defense. And we already discussed the question marks there. What's Nebraska going to do to try and expose BYU defensively? Well, first of all, they're going to try to get to the edges to see if these outside backers um, can play force, to see if Takanaka at Strong State D can come up and play force. They're going to try to attack the edges with speed. They're more um, experienced at outside of the tackles. The inside of their offensive line is new. So I don't know that they're going to run right downhill, but they're going to test BYU in the run game first. Mike Riley likes to balance it up establish the run game. He likes to run a pro-style offense. Um, and then I think if they can successfully run the ball early, they'll play action pass and try to get things over the top. Um, it, it's really interesting to me. So you got Tommy Armstrong at quarterback. And he's really an option guy. And he's been, during, during fall camp, I've read about 10 articles coming out of Nebraska, very inconsistent in the pass game. I mean, it doesn't fit what Mike Riley likes to do, but Mike Riley's got to kind of, got to do what Robert and I did the second half of the season last year and adjust the offense to fit Kristen Stewart. Mike Riley's got to adjust this offense to fit Armstrong. So I – It doesn't sound like that's happening. Yeah, I don't know. It's really, really hard to put your finger on how what Nebraska is going to look like offensively because we know what Mike Riley wants to run. We know that he doesn't have the quarterback to run exactly what he wants to run. So what kind of in-between are we going to see – in that first game, but certainly they'll try to establish the run and then they'll take some shots over the top to see if BYU is going to keep things in front. This will be discussed. I can guarantee it tonight on after further review, where you can watch Blaine Fowler at eight Eastern, the debut of after further review. You can also see Blaine live in Lincoln on countdown to kickoff this Saturday. Safe it's travels, game, my friend. It's game week. It's game week. Man. We made it. We made we it to it. game week. The survival period is real. Okay.